This is Jarpur Amber Ale. Um, it, they describe it as deep in color, rich in flavor. This brazen amber ale brings the flavors of caramel, subtle chocolate, and some earthy yet fruity notes of aroma. Hmm. Huh. This is from Brazen Hall Brewing Company in Winnipeg. Today, I'm going to be tearing apart this Sunbeam LED light bulb. This thing was in service in my son's bedroom since October of 2016 until a couple weeks ago when it finally gave up. Um, Sunbeam are one of the brands that you buy at the local Dollarama store. So I think I've been inside one of these before that was working, but today I'm going to go into this one and figure out why it stopped working. I got a couple of clues right away that I'm seeing on the outside here. The first is this crack in the base, which is interesting. And the second is this odd little discoloration up on the globe. I'm not quite sure what that means, but, uh, I don't know, for four-year-old LED light bulb, I suppose there could be a little bit of heat discoloration. Or when it uh, died, it might have spewed some smoke or something like that. I don't know. Well, let's get into it. As far as I remember, it's glued right along there. So I'm not expecting this to be a reversible teardown, which is fine. Um... I suppose I could try and repair it depending on why it broke, but I don't know that I'd be able to get it back together. So I think I'm just going to make use of this crack and let's see if that will help me get in. Hmm. That's seeming fairly brittle, not the uh, sort of durability that you expect. Hmm. I might have to get some other weaponry here. <laughs> that, the glue joint didn't give up. The plastic around the base got brittle from old age. So I guess it, there was some heat going on in there that was, uh, yeah, that's just kind of crumbling apart. Wow. That's a little bit unexpected. A couple of screws holding the LED board to the base. Get out. And if I remember from the last time I was in one of these... Yeah, the, uh, oh, okay, it was soldered. Oops. So this is actually the bits of solder that were onto the pads on this little board here, which I just tore apart. So we got some old thermal compound on here, which is kind of crusty. And yeah, some on the back there. So that transfers the heat from this little circuit board onto this, which is, I think that goes all the way down. Hang on. That kind of silicone-y, elastic -y kind of adhesive that they used is still nice and pliable. And I'm gonna have to figure out how to separate these two pieces at some point, but I'll worry about that later. So I'm going to look right now at the LEDs. I guess I could just throw some voltage at these, couldn't I? Just see what happens. So there are 16 LEDs in a circle around there. Conveniently located, or conveniently labeled D1 through D16. And they appear to be in series. I'm not sure if you can see the pads there. Um, it runs from here up to one side of this LED, then there's a big pad in between these two. There's a big pad in between these two. Big pads, not for electrical, but for uh, heat spreading. 
and of course there's the aluminum substrate tone there that's uh, taking up a lot of that. Okay, I couldn't find any probes uh, small enough, so I'm using literally sewing pins. And I'm just going across, putting some voltage, uh, current limited, uh, about 5 volts across each LED here. D1 doesn't light up, D2 does. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen. Let's just try one again. Nope, D1 is not working. So that seems to be what the problem is. So that's currently limited about 20 milliamps, and that's giving us 5.7 volts drop across it. Let's turn up the current limit a little bit here. What would we expect? We would expect if there's two chips in there and they're white, about 6.6 .6 volts, right? 6.58 and 77 milliamps. 80 milliamps, something like that. Hmm, okay. What was this thing rated at? I can't tell through all the butchery. Um, no, I can't tell. wonder what would happen if I just shorted across D1, shorted into D2. Um, we'd have a little bit higher voltage across the whole system. And then it'd have to reassemble this, what I destroyed. Nah. Let's not bother with that. Um, I don't have any LEDs like this, and I've already destroyed it enough that I'm not going to get it back together. So, what did we say for voltage? 6.6-ish .6 volts times 16. 105 volts. Okay, so there's not that much being dropped inside whatever magic is in here. Let's just take a look. Well, should we see if there is any voltage coming out of it? I don't know if I would be able to pick any up off that now that I've ripped the pads off it. Oh, maybe I can reattach this. Let's just see what happens. Hmm. Well... No, now I've done it. Uh, while I was trying to clean up the solder on these pads to try and reattach it there, I knocked off one of the LEDs, and that wasn't even the bad one. That was one of the good ones. Hmm, I wonder if that's actually the LED there, or did I rip the guts out of the thing? Hmm, there's something to play with. No, it's done for. Where did that piece go? Hello? Microscopic little... Where are you? So much for that. I guess we will go into here and see if it's... See if... Let, yeah. Let's see if this thing died. Um, or did the LED die first? And it's possible that the... Um, that the power supply died and took the LED out. Or it's equally possible that the LED just died of its own accord. Right, now I'm ready. No smoke. Okay. A sacrificially cheap meter set to 200 volts DC. Trying to touch anything metal here. Oy. No, there's 150 volts with no load there. Okay. So that tells me that that probably is still working. If I put a load across it of some sort, then we would probably be able to get that down to a reasonable level. What will be a reasonable... Hmm... Let's guess, this thing probably was about a 12 watt light. We'll say 15 just for for good measure. So 105 volts over 
15 watts. No, the other way around. 15 watts over 105 volts gives us 142 milliamps. Okay. Um, so with that, uh, voltage over current will give us a resistor, which we can put across there, right? 750, say a 1K resistor, or 750 to 1K resistor, but it would load that down to its normal operating load, but it has to dissipate like 10 watts. Those are 8 ohms, that's 2.5K, that's 100 ohms, that's 100 ohms, that's 10 watts though, that would, uh, 0.47, that won't do it, 10K, that's 10 watts, what is that, hey, 680, that's pretty close, 680 plus 100 is 780, that gets us in the ballpark actually, I didn't think I could do this, hang on, if this looks dangerous, that's because it is obviously don't try this at home unless you're an idiot um so i've got these two resistors soldered onto those pads and there's just a hair's breadth between the blob and that metal case which i hope isn't grounded um that should be 760 ish ohms which should put us close to what we calculated i hope got the meter clamped on 200 volts dc range we're expecting to see in the 105 volts range because that's kind of what we calculated there. If this thing is still able to provide the kind of current that it was supposed to before the light bulb died. Ready? Plugged in. 71 volts. That might be a little bit low, but that's respectable. So I'm going to just get violent with this can, this uh, little heat sink can here, and uh, I'll be back in a moment once I'm inside. Okay, that was solidly shoved in there. I don't think it was attached with anything except for friction. However, what we find in here is potting compound and a capacitor whose jacket has flaked off. So obviously the heat has gotten to this thing over the years things have dried out um let me pull that capacitor out and measure it let's do that 111.5 microfarad so that's probably 100 or 110 microfarad if it's not dead but it seems to uh give us a reading anyways Okay, it's not domed or bowed or anything, but it's going to be awful hard to figure out what the hell is going on inside here. And this is quite a bit different than the other Sunbeam light that I remember taking apart. Uh, I don't remember this ugly potting compound. Well, that was a while ago. Maybe it was. Hmm. Much, much, much later. <sighs> okay, I think that's about all that potting compound that I can reasonably get out of there. And there's a surprising amount going on inside here. What can I see? There's the AC coming in. It goes through a series inductor, through a resistor, which is probably a fuse, through a bridge rectifier. No surprises there. There's a capacitor in parallel, I think, with the output of the bridge rectifier. Um, that's another inductor, capacitor resistor, little power supply chip. Can I see what he is? SSL S231. Hmm. Yeah, no joy looking up that chip. I tried various different numbers that are on it, but it's a pretty good bet that that's some sort of a constant current power supply chip, especially based on the components around it. Um, then there's the, you know, the transformer there. 
There's a little ferrite bead there, a diode after it. There was a capa big capacitor there for filtering. Uh, what's that transistor doing there? That is probably driving the primary side of that transformer. So yeah, that's uh, a lot more sophisticated than your usual cheap Chinese light. Uh, certainly more sophisticated than this little cheap Chinese light kit with a capacitor dropper in it that I put together recently. That power supply actually was working until I beat it up too. So the failure mode ultimately of this light like we discovered was the LED board itself or one of the LEDs failing in the series string. And I just destroyed it further and further as I took it apart. But that's kind of what I expected going in. Now you know. Um, yeah, I don't think there's anything more to say about this pile of carnage here. Um, I don't know. Curiosity satisfied. Thanks for watching. Um, questions or comments about this mess? Uh, down below in the comments section. Thanks again. I'll talk to you later.